But I thank God that his promises are true. And if you're watching by Facebook or live stream today, I have a message for you. I believe that it's the responsibility of a leader when he can to dispel fear. You know, just the presence of a leader, many times that presence, that it will dispel fear when it tries to grip your heart. And I thank God for our president and what he's doing. This is the National Day of Prayer. And before we make our confession of faith, I just want us to pray for him. Brother Philip, if you would come and lead us in this prayer. For our president, Donald J. Trump, who was declared March the 15th today, 2020, as a National Day of Prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you today for a man that you put in office that would consider the, the call, talking to you about our world situation. Lord, we pray, God, tonight, today, that you would open the hearts and minds of Christians across this nation. Lord, that we would lift our hearts and our praises to you, and that we would bring our requests before you, and that you, O oh God, uh, would see to the need of this nation and around the world. Lord, we know we're facing a crisis, but with the crisis we face, Lord, is unseen. Lord, but we know that you see, and Lord, we know that you're able to rebuke the powers of Satan that caused all of this problem and all of these troubles. And Lord, we rebuke him in Jesus' name. We command him to cease and to desist. And we pray that you would be glorified in all of this and whatever comes of it. Lord, may it all bring glory to the name of Jesus Christ. For it's in his precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Church said amen. Now let's hold our Bibles up. Make a confession of faith. Say it like you mean it. Because this is important. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you for being here today. You will turn in your Bibles to Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21, my subject this morning, don't play the blame game. Don't play the blame game. If you will look up there, you can see the medical insignia, the two serpents on the side, and uh, the pole representing the cross, and uh, that is the symbol of the medical profession world. And uh, my subject today, don't play the blame game, is very relevant to our nation, to our homes, to our families, and to the problems that we're facing right now. Society does not set the standards for the church because God's word is our standards. Our social standards and our cultural values, they change like the wind. But the Word of God will stand the test of time because the Bible speaks of itself and says, Thy word, O Lord, is forever settled in heaven. Well, if it's settled in heaven, God needs some anointed servants and some praying people to settle it here on earth. Can I get a good amen from the church? Hallelujah. Thank you for being here. Look at Numbers chapter 21, verse 4. It says, As they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom, and the souls of the people was much discouraged because of the way, because of what was going on. And the Lord, the people spake against God, look at this, and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is no bread. Neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. Now, I want you to notice God's immediate reaction. And I'm, I know that God is a good God. And when I saw this, this really put me on a quest to study why this happened. A lot of people want to blame God. And these people blame God. But we don't blame God. God is not our problem. God is our solution. And the Bible says, looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and the finish of our faith. We've been born again, 
by the Spirit of God. And God, we didn't go looking Him. He came looking us. He wanted to save us because He loves us and God is for us. Uh, a lot of people don't understand this about God and they want to blame God for everything that's wrong in the world. That is a real devil. And the Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may defy. Jesus said, the thief, the devil, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, but don't get me mixed up with him. I am come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. So I want to talk to you out of this Old Testament story and show you some principles and show you how God in his goodness and his mercy, met the need of these people, and God will meet the need of us today. Amen. Now, I want you to notice God's immediate reaction when they complain and, and grumble. Verse 6, Numbers 21 and 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much of Israel died. Therefore, the, Lord, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Now look at this. These people aren't on praying terms, but they said, pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Look at verse 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent, set it upon a pole. It shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, he shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, put it upon a pole. And it came to pass as if a serpent had been any man. When he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. My subject, don't play the blame game. Let us pray. Father, thank you that this has been declared a national day of prayer here in America by our president, Donald J. Trump. And Lord, we are praying. We, we pray, Lord, we meet and pray here uh, on Friday nights, on Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, Wednesday nights. And, Lord, we pray in our homes because we know that you're a good God and that prayer moves the hand of God. And no matter what we're facing, Lord, we are more than conquerors through you because your eye watches the sparrow. Not a sparrow falls to the ground without your noticing it. And, and, Lord, we know that if you'll take care of the birds of the air, you will take care of us. And the church said in Jesus' name, amen. Now, right now, fear has gripped this nation's heart, and people have gone into a panic mode. Everyday life has been turned upside down. Think about it. School closings, business closings, church closing, Even the sports events in America have been shut down. I'll tell you, that, that's something right there. I, I, you know, America, I think that's a, one of their gods right there. Okay, now I'll get myself out of trouble. Now, President Trump has declared a national emergency to put billions of dollars back into our economy to fight COVID-19. We have the best doctors in the world. Think about that. We have the best hospitals in the world, in America. We have the best medical technology in the world. And church, we can all rejoice and praise God and be thankful that we live in a land of freedom and we have freedom to gather and worship the Lord on the Lord's day. Go on and praise him. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for that, and I'm thankful for our president who understands business. I, I came out of the business world, and, and, and sometimes I think, man, I need to be up there in Washington, D.C., because I'm so much smarter than some of those people up there. I imagine you've had that, that idea, but our president, he understands business, and he has taken measures to join the government and the private sector together to fight this epidemic. And President Trump, think about that, but he has declared today, March the 15th, as a national day of prayer. Thank you, President Trump. We love you. We love your family. And we thank God for a president that believes in the power of prayer. I hope somebody gets this message to him to let him know there's a church in Wilson, North Carolina that loves 
our president, and we support him because he is doing the very best that he can. Now, our president has done everything naturally to protect the people of America, but thank God he has not forgotten that God answers prayer. Now, I want you to look at this great promise because we quote it often in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. But this should mean something very, very significant to you during this time that we're going through. God said, if my people, look at it, which are called by my name, shall turn, humble themselves and pray. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, brother. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. I want people to see this. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. God said, all I need is some praying people. And President Donald J. Trump has declared this as a national day of prayer. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Now, the coronavirus is here, and it is real, and we need to be cautious, and we need to use common sense. But most of all, we need to pray, and we need to trust God. We don't need to panic. We don't need to complain. We don't need to murmur. We don't need to play the blame game. This is an, is an election year, and you already know that, and the politicians and the news media, they're going to use this crisis to their advantage. They have instilled fear throughout this nation by their constant reporting and the things that are going on. Now, I don't deny the fact that we have a problem, but it's not the first time a problem has ever shown up in this nation or in any nation. Now, the text I read, it is a very interesting story to me. These people, they had complained against God, and they blamed God for their problems. They forgot that God is a good God. Now, after all, he had brought this entire nation out of Egyptian bondage. He fed them with manna in the wilderness. He flew in quail when they complained about that. He provided water out of the rock. He clothed them with clothes and with shoes that would not wear out. He led them with a fire by night to keep them warm. And he led them with a cloud by day to keep them cool. Oh, he provided air condition right there in the wilderness. And if he can provide air condition in the wilderness, he knows where you are. He knows who you are. And he can solve your problem. Go on and praise the king. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. God had performed miracle after miracle to meet their every need. But now they murmur and complain and they blame God for their situation. But the truth of the matter is this. They had sinned. They had forgotten the goodness of God. God is a good God. So why the, serpent, the fiery serpents? That put my mind to spinning because I know that everything God has ever done toward me, it has just been the goodness of God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of light in whom there is no shadow, no verbalness, no turning. So good things come from God, and all the evil thing, they come from our adversary, the devil. And if you can ever get that much straight and realize you're not fighting flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places, if you ever get that much straight, and if you'll pray, you're on your way to victory. Hallelujah. God is a good God. So if God allows something, God has to have a reason. You know, some people, they look for the bad. They want to blame God. But I've always looked for the good in God. Because when he saved me, I didn't even like me. But I realized that God loved me. I realized that God had done something for me that no one else could ever do. And I have never forgotten the touch of that nail-scarred hand. Am I preaching to people that know what I'm talking about? If so, go on and praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. 
I have never forgotten that touch, and it just put me on a quest to know more about God. And so I got to thinking about this. Why did God send the fiery serpents? Well, he didn't send them. They were there all along. Look at this. God said, don't forget me at the place of fullness. Look at Deuteronomy 8 and 14. He said, don't forget me at the place of fullness when thy heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Now look at the next verse and you'll see it. Who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought where there was no water who brought forth water out of the rock of Flint. Their problem came simply because they had sinned and they forgot God. The wilderness through which they passed, it was infested with fiery serpents. Look at that. Go back and read that in, in your own time. Hallelujah. But up to this point, God had protected them. But they, because of their disobedience, because of their prideful attitude, God allowed these snakes to come into the camp, and they were biting the people, and they were dying. That is actually what happened. It's in your Bible. Now, I want you to remember that these people, they were out in the wilderness, and they had sinned against God. And when they realized their mistake, they came to Moses, and they asked him to pray and to ask God to take away the fiery serpents. And when Moses prayed, the Lord instructed him to make a fiery serpent. Look at it. Put my my title back up there please put the title up there look at that he said make a fiery serpent set it on a pole you see the two serpents everyone that looketh and bitten when they look upon the brazen serpent they will live now I want you to remember they are out in the wilderness people are dying so how long does it take to make a brass snake where are they going to get the brass to make this serpent? Who among them is qualified to craft it? Who and how would you attach it to the pole? How long would it take? Sounds like some of the problems we're facing today, doesn't it? And you've got to remember the whole time that this is taking place, people are dying. They have been snake bitten. They have no medical team. They have no hospitals. They have no antivirus. They have no doctors and no nurses. But they had God. Woo! I said they had God. I said they had God. And God is a good God. And when people repent and look to God, God always provides the needed miracle. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. And God has not changed his mind. Go on and praise him. He is a good God. Hallelujah. God said, all I need you to do is to make a brazen serpent, put it on a pole, and have everybody look up. And if they will look up upon that brass serpent on that pole, then they will live. But here's the problem. And here's the problem with humanity. This is the problem that most people have because the Bible says if our gospel is hid, it is hid by the God of his world who has blinded their minds, at least the glorious light of the gospel should shine unto them and they should be free. Well, first of all, see, when we get snake bit, and I'm going to just preach a little while, the natural inclination for us is to look down instead of looking up. We tend to look down and focus on the snake. We want to find the snake. We want to handle this thing ourselves. It's just natural, you know, when you get snake bitten, not to look up. The first natural instinct is give me a stick. Give me a hoe, or better yet, give me a semi-automatic rifle. Where is that snake that bit me? I'm going on a snake hunt. 
And when life deals you crushing blows, many times we tend to play the blame game. You see, life is real. And you have to deal with some tough issues at times. Whether it's COVID-19, a broken heart, or some other issue. We all have to deal with tough issues in this life. But we don't need to go snake hunting. No. We need to look up. But instead of looking up and seeking God's help, too many times we want to handle things ourselves. I thought about our president. That man has worked tirelessly bringing teams together. Way before anyone else spoke out, he spoke out about, and they call him a racist, and they, they said, you, you shouldn't put those tariffs, and you, you shouldn't do this, and you shouldn't do that. Have you listened to the news lately, and how we have been crippled by, in our economy, in some areas, if we don't change things, and he's been changing it, and he's declared today a national day of prayer, and I'm thankful for a man like that. He's got some good common sense, and somewhere he got some Bible sense. Hallelujah. Go and praise the Lord. Glory to God. I, I tell you, the, the last administration, and I won't call their name and even that party, but I tell you, they did not have a national day of prayer, but Donald J. Trump said it's not going to be happy holiday. It's going to be Merry Christmas, and we're going to have a national day of prayer. Praise God. Go on and thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah for his goodness and his mercy to this nation. Now, people, when they get hurt, they want to retaliate. And they want to become a snake on them. They try to get revenge. They try to punish the snake. I'm going to punish that snake for what he did to me. The pain, the suffering, the trauma, that old sorry snake. I'm going to get him for what he put me through. That snake that cheated on me when we were married, I'm trying to help some of you. Put some things behind you and go on. That snake that stole money from me in that business deal. That snake that abused me when I was a child. Or that snake that lied upon me. See, we all have to deal with issues. And, and we don't need to go snake hunting. We don't need to focus on the snake. We need to focus on Jesus Christ the author and the finish of our faith. Hallelujah. There is victory in Jesus. And when you seek him, you will find him and your problems will be solved when you search for him with all your heart. Go on and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, this is an interesting story to me simply because I've lived long enough to know that sooner or later, everyone is going to get snake bitten and somebody's going to try to poison your spirit and poison your relationship with God if you don't forgive neither can your father which is in heaven forgive you of your trespasses and you've heard me say it a thousand times don't let your happiness be in somebody else's head but let your happiness be in Jesus Christ our Lord hallelujah the key to your victory is don't focus on the person that did you wrong. Don't become a snake hunter. Focus on the solution. Focus on Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. Somebody go on and praise him. Hallelujah. <laughs> what difference does it make what kind of a snake it was or who the snake was? You've got to get rid of the poison that is in you if you're ever going to to heal and you don't need to focus on that snake you need to look up to Jesus who is able to heal you hallelujah you need to release forgiveness and not allow bitterness to get inside of you now when someone wrongs you they did that to you but when you refuse to forgive you did that to you so you cannot blame anyone else don't play the blame game. If you choose to forgive, no one can destroy you. If you choose to forgive, no one can stop what God has purposed 
for your life. Hallelujah. So first of all, don't focus on the snakes that have bitten you in life. Secondly, don't focus on the wounds that you have received. Why? You don't understand. I've been hurt. It looks so bad. Just look. Look. Look at where I was bitten. They focus on the wound, and they play the blame game. They get a victim mentality, and they describe in detail just how much they hurt. And every time you meet them, they want to roll up their pants leg and show you their bites. Just look at what that old snake that I was married to did to me. Look at how I was abused by my parents. Look at how my employer treated me. Why, I never had a chance. They just passed over me. Maybe you didn't show up to work on time. Maybe you weren't qualified for that position. Maybe you just need to quit blaming everybody else and take an inward look. And when you take an inward look, I promise you something, you will take an upward look. There came a time in my life I had to take an inward look, and I realized, hey, the problems you're having, they are problems that you're reacting to what has happened in your life. And, and so I just looked up, and I took a far-off look, and I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And when he did, my whole world changed. Hallelujah. And God is a good God. Glory to God. See, there comes a time when you got to stop playing the blame game and blaming everybody. What they did to you was real, and we don't minimize that. Child abuse is real. Rape is real. War and the traumas of war, it is real. Prejudice is real. Rejection is real. But if you focus on those things, you will never, never, never get any better. At some point in life, you have got to take charge of your own situation. Don't blame others for where you are in life. At some point, you've got to decide for yourself, I am going to go on into a life of victory through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Somebody go on and praise him, hallelujah. <laughs> so what was the great sin of Israel? Well, they spoke against God, and they spoke against Moses, and they blamed God, and they blamed Moses for their situation. Don't blame the preacher. Please don't blame the preacher for what you're going through. He's trying to help you, and he brings the Word of God. My, my wife can tell you, you know, why are you laboring over that so long, Jerry? I said, because I haven't got it right. I, I wanted to change the title about four times. And finally, last night, I was about to change the title. She said, why don't you go with the title that God gave you? And so I did. Hallelujah. But don't play the blame game. Amen? Now, what was the great sin of Israel? Well, they spake against God and Moses. Look at Numbers 21 and 5. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathes this, this light bread. They are complaining to God and said, we're tired of this manna. They're saying, God, we're tired of what you've already provided. That's what they would literally say. But the truth of the matter is, these people, they had sinned. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among them, and they were bitten. They got snake bitten. I, I read you that, and I want you to go back and study that. Now, I want you to notice the remedy, because this is the important part. God did not take away the serpents. They were there. The people were sick, and they were dying because of their sin of disobedience. And when Moses prayed... God gave him the remedy. And God said, make a brass serpent, set it upon a pole, and whosoever has been bitten, when they look at the brazen serpent, they shall live. God was directing their mind back to the original covenant promise. Hallelujah. See, God wanted them to understand that he was a good God. 
And God didn't take that serpent away. He provided a remedy. He provided a redeemer. I want you to look at what God said to that serpent way back in Genesis 3.15. And what this snake being put on the pole represents. Put my title back up there, please, brother. Hallelujah. What this snake represented was that promise. And I'm going to read that promise to you, Genesis 3.15. Look at it. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Well, a woman doesn't have a seed. A man has a seed. And that's why Jesus was born of a virgin. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost overshadowed that virgin. And she conceived and brought forth our Savior, the Son of the living God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John said, we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. And here's the truth of the matter right here in Genesis 3:15. God said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and it shall bruise his heel, my Lord. Now, this was the first covenant promise of a serpent bruiser. God wanted to direct their attention back to his original promise. And I believe that during this COVID-19 and coronavirus crisis, that God wants to direct the attention of his people back to his promises in the word of God. We don't need to, to panic. We don't need to focus on the problem, but we need to focus on our God during this crisis, and we need to focus on his exceeding great and precious promises. Now, listen just to a few of these covenant promises. God said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Yea, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God says that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind. Hallelujah. God said, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. God said, no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. Can I get a good praise at that? <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says, now thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory and always causes us to triumph through Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul said, nay, in all these things we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I think I'll take me a praise break. If you want to take one, praise God. Let's give Jesus a standing ovation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are more than conquerors. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith hallelujah glory to God we're seeing that abound grace 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 God's amazing grace does much more abound hallelujah glory 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 he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are heal. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who forgives all our sin, who heals all our disease, who redeems our life from destruction, who crowns us with loving kindnesses and tender mercies, who satisfies our mouth with good things and renews our youth like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I said, bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to God. And we sang it earlier, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose strike you were healed. If I was, then I am. Glory. He's the most high. He's possessor of heaven and earth. He is a deliverer from every enemy that you will face. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh goodness and mercy. They follow me everywhere I go. 
They're just trying to hunt me down. Hello, goodness. Hello, mercy. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Hallelujah. Glory. Woo! <laughs> glory. Glory. Go on praising. Glory to God. Go on and shout aloud. Hallelujah. You serve the most high. Glory to God. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because I'm free. Hallelujah. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know, I know he watches me. And the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord. Now, what I want to tell you is this. <laughs> if God can spread a table in the wilderness and God can heal those people in the wilderness of those fiery serpents, don't you know he can take care of you and me? See, God's whole purpose was he wanted Israel to know that his promise was greater than any problem that they would ever face. Let me say that. He wanted the whole nation of Israel to know that his promise was greater than any problem or situation they would ever face. And in this instant, God took the eyes of the entire nation and he turned it back to the coming, the promise of the Redeemer. And that's what America needs today. What we're facing, it is real. But we can rest assured of this one thing. God is not surprised by any of it. If God can provide a remedy for an entire nation in the wilderness, God will provide for you and me. I believe what the Lord would have me to say to you today is fear not. Don't let fear grip your heart. I want you to look at the very middle verse of the Bible. It's called Psalms 118 and 8. I memorized this years ago. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Aren't you glad for a president that's doing everything he can, bringing teams together, bringing technology together, scientists together, Businesses together, but today he made a declaration. I want to bring God's people together, and I want this to be a national day of prayer. I close with this, Pastor Ricky. The truth of the matter is this we have all been snake bitten, but one day the Redeemer, the Lamb of God, he showed up on planet earth. And Jesus likened himself to that brazen serpent. Look what he said in John 3, 14. He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We are so afraid in this nation, the people, of that virus if you're going to fear some one nation fear God and turn your heart to God reverence God he's a good God Jesus went to that old rugged cross he took everything that could destroy us and he defeated it and that's power in his blood to conquer any problem we would ever face the snake has been the enemy of the human race from the very beginning. But his utter defeat, it is set forth 
in the triumph of the cross. Let us stand. Don't play the blame game. Focus your eyes on Jesus. For all his promises are yes and amen. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to Please, no one leaving the sanctuary. That's reverence, God. I landed this plane real early. Just to 1152. I want you to sit in God's presence. And let him talk to you. Jesus. You're not saved. Jesus. The Redeemer. His name is Jesus. And if he's spoken to your heart, I want you to get up and come to this altar. Surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And when you know him, the Prince of Peace, all fear will leave you. Praise he gives us the peace of God that passeth all understanding. Jesus, Jesus, how trust him how I proved him more and I'm going to let everybody make an altar where you are so if you feel the need to come down talk to your God or if you don't even know God get up and come I would consider it a wonderful privilege to lead you to Jesus oh so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise and to know thus saith the Lord thus saith the Lord come on say for being with us by live stream, Facebook lives. Just to trust. I invite you to come out. To this trust is over. Cleansing. Worship with us. Have a special need. Just and call me. Go to that website. My phone number's out there. Okay. I'll come. I'll pray with you. I'll help you. That's what I'm sent to do. Hallelujah. 